So when we look at uh, numerous Hall of Fame, uh, what I call selections and uh, inductees in recent months with our podcast, you know, I criticize their Brunswick Sports Hall of Fame. It's not their fault they're not making a major effort to be uh, proactive in getting people that deserve to be in there. But the other problem with some of the bigger Hall of Fames is the media decides who gets in. Now, this guy was no, uh, had no fans in the media. They uh, used to chastise him on a regular basis, make fun of him, said he had no personality. Jesus Christ, when this guy played, ladies and gentlemen, uh, balls would go out of the park. Uh, you, you take Vladimir Guerrero Jr. at a fast wing. This guy was literally the King Kong of Major League Baseball for nearly two decades. Uh, also known as the Sky King. Now, Dave Kingman, if you're from the 1970s and watch National League, that still makes us scared, uh, is considered the best player not to be in the Hall of Fame of the golden era of the 1970s and 80s. Now, he played first base, third base, and was a DH, a three-time Major League All-Star with 442 career home runs and 1,210 RBIs over 16 seasons. He's the only major league player to have more than 441 months not in the Hall of Fame uh, other than the active players. In his career, Kingman, Kingman averaged a home run every 15 at-bats, tied for 14 best all-time. So put this in perspective. 600 at-bats, he would get 40 home runs, and that was his uh, yearly average. Now, Kingman, they said he was 6'6", he was more than 6'7", I saw him play. My God, what a, what a big drink of water at the plate, sort of like Frank Howard. He was a power hitter who twice led the NL in home runs, known for his long home runs. He once hit a home run that was measured at over 430 feet, but may have been 550 feet. We're getting that in a second. Now, the only negativity with Kingman, obviously, with a big home run hitter, he struck out frequently and posted a low batting average and on-base percentage. His 1,816 strikeouts were the fourth highest total in Major League Baseball history at the time of his retirement. As a result of the increase in frequency of strikeouts since then, he currently ranks 18th as of January 2019. Now, he finished in the top 25 voting for the National League Most Valuable Player four times, 72, 75, 76, and 79, and the American League Most Valuable Player once in 84. Upon retiring, he was the 16th on the all-time home run list and tied for fourth on the all-time Grand Slam list with 16 with Aaron and Babe Ruth. So the statistics seem to bear out the fact he should be in the Hall of Fame. Now, born in the great community of Pendleton, Pendleton, Chicago, uh, excuse me, Pendleton, Oregon, my God, I'm confusing my cubs here, Pendleton, Oregon, he moved with his family to Denver uh, in 1954 and 51, to LA in 54, and finally to Mount Prospect, Illinois, as Kingman, Kingman's father worked for United Airlines and moved to family as needed for his career. Now, Kingman attended Prospect High School, where he was the center and a forward on the uh, basketball team, being named All-Area, a wide receiver and safety on the football team, and a star pitcher on the baseball team. Kingman uh, did throw a no-hitter against Niles Road High School on April 6, 67. In his final high school game, he hit four home runs and pitched a two-hit shutout. Now, he was eventually drafted by the California Angels out of high school in the second round of the 67 LMB draft and then by the Baltimore Orioles in the first round of the 68 draft but chose instead to attend the University of Southern California to play college baseball for the USC Trojans under coach Rod Dado after a year at Harper Junior College in Palatine, Illinois. Now, Kingman began as a pitcher before being converted to a full-time outfielder. In 69, Kingman held a 11-4 win-loss record with a 1.38 earned run average and batted 250 with four home runs and 16 runs batted in as a part-time hitter for USC. Now, in the 1970 USC NCAA championship season, he hit 355 with nine home runs and 25 RBIs, exclusively as a hitter, despite missing time mid-season due to injury. In 70, Kingman was named an All-American and led the Trojans to the College World Series title, along with teammates 
pitchers, a future uh, MLB star, Steve Busby, Jim Barr, and Brent Strom. King was then selected by the San Francisco Giants with the first pick of the 1970 secondary phase draft. Now, after signing with the Giants, Kingman played for the Class AA Aberdeen Giants in 1970 after his College World Series of victory. He had 295 with 15 home runs and 45 RBIs in 60 games. Now, moving to Class AA Phoenix in 71, he hit 278 with 26 home runs and 99 RBIs in 105 games before being called up to the Giants. Now, Kingman came up as an outfielder and first baseman with the Giants. He made his major league debut on July 30, 71 for the division winning Giants that year, pinch running for all people Willie McCovey, and finished the game at first base. He hit a home run in his first next game, uh, his first ever Grand Slam, and hit two more a day later. He finished his rookie season with a 278 average with six home runs and 24 RBIs in 41 games. Now on April 18, 72, the second day of the season, he hit for the cycle of the Giants 10-6 victory over the Astros. A day earlier, he made his debut at third, a position he would play off and on for the remainder of his career with the Giants. Kingman also made his major league debut on the mound with the Giants, pitching two innings of of mop-up uh, ball and an 11-0 loss to the Cincinnati Reds on April 15, 73. He pitched again in a mop-up role on May 13th in a 15-3 loss to the Dodgers. In both games, he pitched the final two innings and gave up two earned runs. Now, unfortunately, in 74, he committed, committed 12 errors and 59 chances at third and lost his, lost his starting job to Steve Onaveras. Following the season, the Giants sold the rights for him to the New York Mets. In four seasons of 409 games with the Giants, he had 224 with 77 home runs and 217 RBIs. Again, home run power, low average. Story of his career. We'll get into that in a second. On February 28, 75, uh, the Mets bought him for uh, $150,000, uh, a good price at double, double the uh, outlay. He played 12 games at third with the Mets. However, the Mets eventually abandoned the idea of Kingman as a third baseman and kept, kept him primarily in the outfield. He emerged as a slugger upon his arrival to New York, setting a club record with 36 home runs in 75. He also scored 65 runs, the highest percentage of runs scored on homers <coughs> for anyone that hit more than 30 in a season. A year later, in 76, he broke his own record with 37 homers and was elected to start in right field for the 1976 National League All-Star team. His single-season home run record for the Mets stood until 87 when it was broken by the great Darryl Strawberry. Now, 1977 was a weird year for Kingman because he broke a record for playing for four different teams and hitting home runs for all four of them. He was batting 209 with nine home runs when he became one of three players traded in the infamous Midnight Massacre by the Mets. On June 15, 77, in part of a rebuild, they traded Kingman to the Padres for minor league pitcher Paul Siebert and future Mets uh, manager Bobby Valentine. The great Tom Seaver was also traded to the Reds for Pat Zachary, Doug Flynn, Steve Henderson, and Dan Norman, while Mike Phillips was traded to the Cardinals for Joel Youngblood, and all the players who were, they were traded for became starters pretty much with the Mets, so it was like a filler role. Now, Kingman was eventually waived by the Padres on September 6, 77, and was immediately claimed by the California Angels. On September 15th, Kingman became one of only a handful of players to play and hit home runs for four major league teams in the same season, and the only one to play in each division in baseball in a single year since divisional play started in 69, when he was traded by the Angels to the Yankees for Randy Stein and Cash. Although Kingman's four home runs and seven RBIs in eight games helped propel the Yankees into the postseason, where obviously he won the World Series, uh, he could not participate in the playoffs as he was added to the roster after the August 31st cutoff date for postseason eligibility. Now overall, Kingman hit 221 with 26 home runs and 70 RBI, 78 RBIs in 132 games for the four teams in 77. Now on November 30th, 77, he signed as a free agent with the Cubs, a five-year contract for a quarter million a year. In 78, he hit 266. 40 points over his regular average with 28 home runs and 78 RBIs in 119 games with the Cubs. Now, 
the best game for him in the year was uh, on May 14, 78, when he hit three home runs against the Dodgers, including a three-run shot to the top of the 15th that gave the Cubs a 10-7 victory. Now, eight of the Cubs' 10 runs were driven in by Kingman. Following the game, radio reporter Paul Olden asked Dodger manager Lasorda about the opinion of Kingman's performance that day, inspiring an off-repeated uh, replayed and censored obscenity uh, lays to raid. Now, this is where I think the media started turning against Kingman because a lot of people felt that maybe Kingman was egging on Lasorda, like telling the reporter to maybe ask the question. And this is where the anti the anti Kingman uh, media started, not not his uh, creation, of course. Now, in the 1979 season, this was arguably the best year of his career. He batted 288 with 48 home runs, 115 runs batted in, uh, and uh, only Dave Winfield had more, and 97 runs scored. He hit three home runs in a game twice that season, both coming in Cubs losses. The first was a slugging duel with Mike Schmidt on May 17 at Wrigley Field. Kingman hit three home runs and drove in six, while Schmidt hit two in the game, with Schmidt delivering his second at the top of the 10th inning to give the Phillies a 23-22 victory. The YouTube of the game is on, available online. I would check it out if you got seven hours to kill. Now, Kingsman's third home run during the game is likely the longest home run of his career and believed to be the longest in the history of Wrigley Field. There is a street called Ken Kenmore Avenue that tees in the Waveland Avenue behind left center field. Kenmore is lined with houses and the ball Kingman hit landed on the third porch roof of the east side of Kenmore, a shot estimated at between 550 and 560 feet. Now, the second three-round homer game for Kingman that year came against the Mets on July 28th in a 6-4 loss in New York. Now, that year, his 613 slugging percentage was almost 50 points higher than that of his next closest in a National League competition, which was Schmidt. He eventually finished 11th in NHL MVP balloting that year and led the league in strikeouts for the first time in his career. Now in 1980, whose personality former Mets teammate, the, uh, the immature and untalented John Stearns, had once compared to a tree trunk, uh, dumped a bottle a bucket of ice water on Daily Herald reporter Don Frisky head late in spring training. Kingman regularly insisted he was most quoted and he began appearing regularly in the Chicago Tribune as a nominal author of a column ghost written by Chicago Park District employee Gerald Pfeiffer, Mike Royko. Uh, now, uh, excuse me, uh, Gerald Pfeiffer. Mike Royko, then writing for the rival Chicago Sun Times, parody Kingman's column with a series using the by by byline Dave Ding Dong. Now, the, the Cubs held a Dave Kingman t-shirt day in conjunction with his game with the Pirates on August 7th, but media reports lambasted said Kingman as he instead spent the afternoon at Navy Pier promoting Kawasaki jet skis at Chicago Fest. Now, in 1980, uh, injured for most of the season, 18 home runs and 57 RBIs in only 81 games, but a 278 average. Now, in overall, these three seasons with the Cubs, he batted 278 with 94 homers and 250 RBIs and a 907 OPS in 345 games, averaging about 115 games a season. Now, in January 1980, the Pace and Ayer sold the Mets franchise to Doubleday Publishing for $21.1 million. Now, Nelson Doubleday Jr. was named chairman of the board, while minority shareholder Fred Wilpon took on a role of president. On February 28, 81, the Mets reacquired the Kingman from the Cubs for Steve Henderson in cash. In separate deals, the new organization also reacquired Rusty Staub, who was let go to the Tigers, and two seasons later, Tom Seaver. Now, Kingman played primarily first for upon his return to the Mets in 81 in a strike-shortened season, and exclusively there his second season back in New York. In 82, he tied his own Mets single-season home run record while hitting 204, the lowest batting average for a first baseman with enough play appearances to qualify for the batting title. Leading the league in home runs that year, it was also the lowest batting average for any season's home run leader, and Dave had 99 RBIs in 82. Now, he led the NHL in strikeouts both of his first seasons on return to the Mets, 105 in 81 and 156 in 82. 
And on June 15, 83, the sixth anniversary of the Midnight Massacre, the Mets acquired first baseman Keith Hernandez from the Cardinals for pitchers Neil Allen and Rigo and B. And Kingman remained with the team for the remainder of the season in a limited role because Hernandez had took his place. He was released at the end of the season and signed as a free agent with the Athletics. In six total seasons with the Mets, he had 219 with 150 home runs, 154 home runs, and 389 RBIs in 664 games. Now, in a, in a, in a move that, that probably well predicted the Bash brothers, and if he would have stayed, he, he, they probably would have won more divisional titles before the, the late 90s. On April 16, 1684, he collected his fifth and final three homer game for uh, Oakland in a 9-6 win over the Seattle Mariners. He made just nine appearances at first base in 84 and was the A's regular DH the remainder of the time. For the 84 season, he hit 268 with 35 homers and 118 RBIs. He was being the A's comeback player of the year, but finished only 13th in MVP voting. After hitting 30 homers in 85, Kingman's 35 homers in 86 were a record for a player in his uh, final season until surpassed by the great David Ortiz in 2016. Now, in three seasons as DH in Oakland, he collected at least 30 home runs and 90 RBIs in each campaign. He also had two at-bats in this period, which did not result in home runs, but nonetheless were noteworthy. In the Metrodome against the Twins on May 4, 84, he had a pop-up that flew into a hole in the roof and got, st got stuck for a ground rule double. Now, in a game against Seattle, he hit a hard drive on April 11, 85. The left wheel which struck a speaker hanging from the roof of the kingdom, bounced back and was caught for an out. Now, during his final year in Oakland, 86, he sent a live rat in a pink box to Sue Fornoff, a sports writer for the Sacramento Bee. The rat had a tag attached to it that read, My name is Sue. Fornoff claimed that Kingman had told her that women do not belong in the clubhouse and that he harassed her several times since she began covering the team the year before. Kingman himself said it was intended as a practical joke. The A's eventually fined Kingman $3,500 and warned that he would be released if a similar incident occurred again. Now, when Kingman's contract expired after 86, Oakland did not renew it and became a free agent. Oakland signed former A and Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson to play his final season as the team's DH for the 87 campaign, playing alongside Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire. But the mind boggles, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Don Baylor, Dave Kingman, Reggie Jackson, Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco. Back to back to back to back to back. Big mistake by Oakland. Big mistake. <coughs> now, in three seasons with Oakland under uh, three managers, Boros, Moore, and La Russa, he had 230 with 100 home runs and 303 RBIs. Now, overall in his career, he hit 236 with 442 overs, 1,210 RBIs, uh, 302 on base percentage, a 780 OPS, and 608 walks and 1,800 strikeouts in, in uh, 1,941 career games. Now, Kingman averaged a home run every 15.11 at bats. Tied with Texas Juan Gonzalez for 14 best all time. Dave Kingman was also awarded over 830,000 in damages for collusion by LMB owners against him and other MLB players who were free agents during the 1986-87 uh, what he call uh, reveal. Now on June 11, 87, he signed a minor league deal with the Giants for the 87 campaign. After 20 games at AAA Phoenix, in which he batted two or three with two home runs, 11 RBIs, he retired from baseball. Now in 89, Kingman played for the West Palm Beach Tropics of the Senior Professional Baseball Association, alongside other former major league players. He had 211 with eight home runs and 40 RBIs. Had the Tropics had the best record in the senior league. Unfortunately, the league folded in 1990. Now, in 92, his last year of eligibility for the Baseball Hall of Fame, he appeared on just three ballots, excluding him from future Baseball Writers Association of America voting. He was the first player, again, to hit 400 or more home runs without being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Now, the Veterans Committee's... Uh, should really, really take a major look. If Ted Simmons can make it, and Dave Kingman's not in there, there's players in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame uh, that were not as good as Dave Kingman. Uh, put it this way. If someone would adjust his swing maybe two inches 
like with the modern, uh, you know, hit a bad batting coaches and stuff, he could hit the most home runs of all time. When he went on a run, nobody could stop him, literally. And what was made him dangerous, he was hitting 35 to 40 home runs a year, so you could never stop him. He was going to hit a number of homers, especially with Chicago and New York. Now, Kingman is very busy in retirement. Uh, he's operated a local tennis club and, uh, you know, uh, the father of three very talented children as well. So for me, Dave Kingman is a top 50 player of the last 50 years. Uh, Charisma to burn, uh, like I said, tall guy, was a winner every place he went. Uh, the 71 and 77 playoff runs for the Giants and uh, the Yankees owe a lot uh, to him. But I still say if Kingman would have been allowed to play in the 77 World Series, he might have been Reggie Jackson numbers. Because Reggie Jackson basically had the same type of you know, uh, plate, uh, plate speed for home runs that Kingman had. And I tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, it was an honor watching Dave Kingman play. I didn't cover him much in my media career because it was at the tail end, 86 was my last year in college. But I, I kept, kept on saying to myself, why didn't he keep Kingman? Again, <laughs> Don, Don Baylor, Don Baylor, if he would have got him back, because, uh, you know, Red Sox and all that. But uh, Don Baylor, Dave Kingman, Reggie Jackson, Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco. If you're an Oakland A's fan, you'll salivate at that lineup, literally and figuratively. Uh, Kingman, like I said, a killer, a killer at the plate. Hated by the Montreal Expo fans because he seemed to have the best success at the low, at the on the lower tier pitchers of the league, which Montreal had quite a few. So if you like what we're doing with our Venture Sports Hall podcast, let us know. Give us a like, comment, or subscribe. If you're a fan of uh, Dave Kingman, let us know uh, what your favorite memory is of King Kong. And if you like what we're doing, give us, again, uh, recognition and requests are always appreciated and considered. Keep your, keep your stick in the ice. As we say in baseball, watch that strike zone. You don't want to throw a Kingman gopher ball. So thanks for listening. Bye.